located in Cincinnati, Ohio, out of the Atlantic 10. 24 and 10 overall, they won the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament to receive the automatic bid. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. Lenny, what should we pay attention to early on in this game? Well, the last time these two teams met back in December, Mississippi State won 82-70. They beat Xavier from the free throw line. They were aggressive. They attacked the post. Xavier's got to change defenses, maybe add some pressure. They need to neutralize Mississippi State's zone and size. Third overall meeting between these two teams. The first meeting back in 1962. And here's Roberts, can't get it to fall. Rebound inside and traveling. Called on Brandon Vincent. Well, right here you see Mississippi State for them. Size has its advantage. They've out-rebounded their last four opponents by almost 15 a game. And Xavier really has to pay attention to putting bodies on bodies and keeping them off the glass. Loose ball power. Jumping on it, picks it up. And Dolman with the deflection right into the hands of Bowers. Now Vincent, down the lane, traveled again. Mississippi State located in Starkville, Mississippi. 16,236 students out of the Southeastern Conference. And they received an at-large bid. And so far in this game, three possessions, three turnovers. We Miss talked about Mississippi State where size has its advantage. You see the steal there. Bowers to the basket. Jams it down with the right hand. Beautiful passing by Brandon Vincent. They also have a little bit of quickness. They'll deny that passing lane. But again, when you talk about Xavier's senior leadership and the experience and a sense of urgency, you know, those seniors brought Xavier back to the brink versus Louisville and Chalmers and Sato in particular. They've got to keep their team poised under the pressure that they'll continue to see this afternoon. Chalmers with 25 points against Louisville. Sato with 24 points. Dolman, a high arcing jump shot. Winston Frazier rips it down. And here come the Bulldogs. Coming off an 85-52 first round win over Monmouth. Vincent down the lane, too strong. Miles with the rebound. Again, a little bit of impatience by Mississippi State. Lawrence Roberts touches the ball once. That's the guy you've got to have significant touches to force the defense to adjust. Sato has that one partially blocked. Vincent with the rebound into the front court. Winston Frazier, and he is fouled going to the basket. Justin Cage gets him. And that's his first foul. And Gus, it's one thing to be able to rebound as well as Mississippi State, but then to have the guys who can get out and run and rise to the occasion as they attack the glass, it just makes you doubly dangerous. So Frazier goes to the line, a junior from Miami, Florida, as Mississippi State looks to advance to the Sweet 16 for the first time since the 1995-96 season. Back then, they advanced all the way to the Meadowlands and the Final Four before losing to Syracuse, 77 to 69. Second free throw off the mark, here comes Dolman. Finds Chalmers. Bulldogs get back into man-to-man -man. Man -man defense. Miles across the lane, forces his way up. Sato with the rebound, no call. Squirts out to Bowers. He creeps into the front court. Frazier. Dribble drive on the baseline. Inside, no. Well, Mississippi State continuing to try to get inside that paint. They know that the last time these two teams played, they got 24 points from the free throw line. That essentially was the difference in that game. Dolman, beautiful ball fake, gets Jane Power up in the air. And Xavier on the board. Talked to Rick Stansberry before the game. He said when they met each other on December 13th at Starkville, Mississippi State did a great job in transition. Frazier down the lane, a prick. They rebounded well and got up the floor quickly. But oddly enough, Xavier out-rebounded Mississippi State by a couple in that game. But again, offset by the free throw opportunity because of the aggressiveness going to the basket. Ends in another rebound on the Dolman miss. Bauer. Rise and fire. Count. Three point basket for Timmy Bowers. Timmy Bowers, a senior from Gulfport, Mississippi, averages 15 points per game on the season. He's the heart and the soul of this team. 
playing the point guard now. He is a converted two guard. And like his counterpart, Chalmers, both these guards play with a lot of poise in them. Well, they do, and Chalmers in particular, again, a senior, understands his importance in his role, but he knows his team can't afford to continue to play from behind. Down 14 against Louisville, they had a masterful comeback. I dare to say, though, Mississippi State, quite a different team on defense inside. It's going to be much more difficult to dig out of a hole against them. Roberts for three. Loose ball, Frazier's there. Lost it on the way up. Dolman with the rebound. 15-51 to go in the first half. Mississippi State on top of Xavier early. Mississippi State up early. Gus Johnson, Lynn Elmore, let's check in with the third member of our team, Dwayne Ballin. Gus, Xavier has remained Sato, a native of the Central African Republic. It's so popular now that his likeness has been reproduced in this small figure. Remember something, six years ago, he arrived in this country unable to speak English. His U.S. guardians, Tom and Tiffany Thompson, helped him by putting post-it notes on furniture and quizzing him. He will graduate with a degree in French, and he speaks six different languages. He's leaving in May, feeling a lot better about being Xavier. And Sato didn't start playing basketball until he was about 14 years old. After having an opportunity to watch some Michael Jordan tapes in the Central African Republic, formerly the Congo. So here's Romaine, wide open, straightaway three, and buries it. Well, that's a good sign for Xavier, obviously. Prior to that shot, off to another slow start. You're now 2 of 7 from the field, but the three turnovers, they've got to be able to maintain possession, get some extra opportunities. Miles with another rebound. And here comes Diedrich Finn, a sophomore from Newburgh, Indiana. Sato on the wing, guarded by Power. He loves to go baseline. Rick Stansberry told me they want to keep Sato away from the baseline. Mississippi State doesn't have help on that baseline. And quite often, Sato draws a lot of fouls going that way. It was a good demonstration of quickness of Lionel Chalmers splitting that defense. Couldn't put the layup down. Inside a steal by Chalmers. Four on two. Chalmers to Miles. And the big fella draws the foul going to the basket. Xavier now much more rhythm on the offensive end. And defensively, Chalmers with that excellent, excellent anticipation. Take a look at him right there. Just slides away from his man, anticipates the pass. And a nice two-on-one break as he makes the defender commit to him before he delivers. So Anthony Miles, senior from Chicago, Illinois, coming off a 15-point, 11-rebound game against Louisville. As he misses the first, follow the game on CBS Sports Line's Game Center and get more than just the game. Get play-by-play -play coverage as it happens without having to refresh the page. Check it out at CBSSportsLine.com. And Gus, you talk about Miles. He and Diedrich Finn. Two guys, Diedrich Finn off the bench. Two guys that are absolute keys for Xavier. We know about Sato, we know about Chalmers, but those are the guys that have to deliver, not only on the offensive end, but they gotta be able to play the strong D. Finn right there, trying to get it done against Timmy Bowers, whistle for the foul. Xavier foul, number 12, Diedrich Finn. So Diedrich Finn picks up the foul, Thad Mata picked up his 100th win on Friday, and he's playing with a heavy heart. Well, he's coaching, rather, with a heavy heart. His daughter, Emily, three years old, came down to Florida from Cincinnati, and she's dehydrated. So right now, Barb, his wife, and Allie, his other daughter, are in the hospital watching the game. And Coach Mata wanted us to say hello to his family, tell him that uh, he loves them, and that uh, he wants them to get well soon and get back to the Xavier basketball program. A foul inside called on Vincent driving to the basket in defensively it's about holding your position loose ball situation it's a nice job there by Dolman nothing fancy didn't try to block the shot just held his position Mississippi State with five turnovers already Finn Dolman step back that one way short partially blocked and here come the Bulldogs Gary Irvin the really tough point guard out of Brooklyn finds Roberts who knocks down a three and he showed an ability to do that the other day in their first round game against Monmouth. Well he has such versatility in his game the ability to put it on the floor shoot from beyond the arc 
as well as post you up. He's a complete package on the offensive end and a guy that you have to game plan for as opponents on the defensive end. So Lawrence Roberts with 19 points in the first round against Monmouth. When we talk about, again, his abilities, obviously we saw him in that game and in this game hit from beyond the arc. But then his ability to run the floor. There he is out running his opponent and getting the easy slam. I mean, when you got a guy with that type of athleticism, that type of size, you can plug him in just about anywhere, and he just gives defenders nightmares. Justin Cage, a freshman from Indianapolis, finds Miles, who draws a double team, tried to split the defense and turns it over. Irvin picks it up to the bucket, and that's the Brooklyn style, going right to the basket at about 700 miles an hour. Again, we talk about Miles being a key. If he's going to be double teamed on the floor, can't force the issue. He's got to look for the open man. You know, it's just simple math. You're double teamed, somebody's open. Edric Finn with the jump shot. He is their super sixth man. And earlier this season, he had 20 points in Starkville against Mississippi State. Talked about Xavier changing up defenses. They've alternated from man to man to his zone. Again, looking to slow down the Mississippi State attack and try to compute. But when you got Lawrence Roberts, as we mentioned, can score from anywhere. Playing man with a bigger, slower guy, he'll just pop from outside, play that zone. He's going to hit you on the baseline. Roberts, beautiful left-handed move on the baseline, 13 to 9. Cage down the lane, hands it off. Miles, eight footer, no. Sato crashing the boards and he draws the foul. Talk about Lawrence Roberts in the zone. Here he is in isolation right here. Not a whole lot of help for the defender. Will Caudle just caught one-on-one -on -one with Lawrence Roberts, and this is not a place you want to be. So Miles has to take a seat. I'm sorry, it's Justin Cage caught on him. Either one, they still don't want to you be one-on-one -on -one with exactly. Lawrence Roberts. And here he is helping to bring the ball up against pressure. Now Irvin. Backs off Chalmers. Xavier in the 2-3 zone. Sato anticipating, deflected it out of bounds, and the Xavier coaching staff says, hey, that's off of Mississippi State, but we'll stay right here. Well, you can see that Xavier's extending their defense, particularly on the weak side, knowing Mississippi State likes to reverse the ball. Extend the defense and hopefully play that ball reversal. Roberts looking inside. Campbell, nice catch for the seven-footer. Gets his own rebound, uh, too strong. Power is there. Force one up, ripped out of the air by Cage. Chalmers down the lane, and he lost it, gets it back. Sato, beautiful pump fake, and he is happy. Mississippi State fans not happy with the call or the lack of a call on the other end. Well, this is just excellent ball movement, usage of the ball fake. Sato with the ball fake comes right down the lane, no fear in his heart. Take another look right there, gets Roberts off his feet, and he is hammered by Marcus Campbell. So Romain Sato is the only active player in basketball with 1,900 points, 800 rebounds, and 200 assists. The fourth all-time leading scorer at Xavier. You look at the minutes that they played, both he and Chalmers, they were endurance guys. Second free throw good. 11.37 to play in the first half. 13-11, Bulldogs. All right, a look at the game summary. Sloppy game to start. Mississippi State shooting 33%, Xavier 25%. A lot of turnovers already. Mississippi State with five and Xavier with three. Well, Mississippi State still commanding the board. Six offensive rebounds, only been able to convert two. But that size advantage is going to take its toll on Xavier. They've got to find a way to keep the big guys of the Bulldogs off that glass. And again, a variety of defenses. I mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, you'll see zones, man-to-man, -man, and pressure. And what the pressure can do is if employed properly take the big guys out of the game you create turnovers you get up and down the floor and start to leave some of those big guys behind that neutralizes roberts to a certain extent in campbell 
Here's Irvin, along with Power, Campbell, Roberts, and Bowers. Another turnover into the front court. Chalmers straight to the basket. Looks like he got away with a walk. But lays it up and in. But again, another turnover by Mississippi State. Xavier really doing a good job again. Denying that ball reversal, not allowing it to go from one side to the other against this zone. Mississippi State with six turnovers early on. They average 16 per game. Power finds Irvin, gets down the lane to kick Robert Power, dribble leads in. Got it. What a terrific basketball player who continues to improve his skills. And I'll tell you what, Gary Irvin has come in. And he's done a nice job in penetrating the gaps when Mississippi State can get the ball reversed. Because that's what reversal does. It stretches the zone and creates gaps. And a guy like Gary Irvin, so adept at putting on the floor, will create for other guys. Louisville unable to get triple penetration in their game on Friday against Xavier. Cage for three. Irvin with the weak side rebound. Here comes a man from New York City. Irvin down the lane. Lost it. Saved by Campbell. Power for three. Off the glass and in. Hey, that's living right. Shane Power has been absolutely tremendous as a starter. Last 15 games, he's shooting about 27 for 45 from beyond the arc. That's amazing. It was three for three in their first round of rent. Win over Monmouth from the three-point line. Gage. Turns the ball over Irving the other way. Stop and start. There's that penetration again. In the corner, Power. Again. Three is five for five in the last two games from downtown. And Mississippi State has its largest lead. And it all began with Irving's penetration, forcing the Xavier defense to collapse. And then all he does is look around the perimeter for the shooters. Now Sato, high screen. Wheel. Fade. Campbell with the rebound. Irvin again. Down the lane, stripped and foul. See, penetration will always put pressure on the defense. You've got to be able to do something with Gary Irvin, forcing him to go east-west. But his quickness seems to be a problem right now for Xavier. Xavier foul on number zero, Lionel Chalmers. His first personal team four. Mississippi State. So Irvin gets to the free throw line. Young man from Brooklyn, New York, as I mentioned, ropes in high school. And Gary was recruited by Todd Miles, who actually is the men's coach now at Robinson. Five, uh, formerly, he was the women's coach. And he is a former Mississippi State Bulldog. And it was interesting. I talked to Rick Stansberry before the game, and he told me this summer Gary was on campus in Starkville. And he said that uh, he kept hearing a weird sound outside the school dorms he finally found out what it was and he had never heard that sound before it was crickets <laughs> so coming out of brooklyn he had never heard the sound of crickets and gary Irvin, what a promising future at mississippi state well the crickets replaced the fire engine <laughs> and the, the police sirens, sirens right? Right. Exactly. you would know you are from brooklyn Twenty-three, thirteen. Chalmers and an offensive foul. Dolman setting a screen. Tonight on CBS, who says the president dropped the ball on terrorism to go to war in Iraq? One of his own former White House advisors. Tonight on 60 Minutes. And since Gary Irvin came into the game, he has four points, three assists to trigger a 10-0 run for the Bulldogs. Takes up the dribble. Stelmach straight away. Rims out. And a foul over the back coming up for Marcus Campbell. Much better job by Anthony Miles in blocking off. But still in all, with Irvin's penetration ability, Mississippi State has been able to get good looks and some easy baskets. Conversely, Xavier really struggling in their half court right now. Mississippi State gets back in transition, forcing Xavier to go half court. We saw the illegal screen. We saw just the Musketeers laboring on offense rather than getting the easy opportunities that they had done for the first couple of minutes. And Shane Power is off to a good start. 
Well, he is. And Dane Powell is one of those kinds of guys that you give him some daylight in a catch-and-shoot situation, he's going to hurt you. And as I mentioned before, he and Gary Irvin playing well together. Power, the Iowa State transfer, has one year remaining at Mississippi State. Here's Irvin now, guarded by Finn. Inside Campbell. Seven foot left hander turn, Stelmach jump hook. Loose ball, and Sato, one of the best rebounding guards in the nation, comes out with it. Now Miles, ceiling. High arcing shot, partially blocked. Here come the Bulldogs. Boy, Campbell is just a load and too long to shoot over for Miles. And Irvin out of bounds. Turnovers have been a problem for Mississippi State. Early, they have seven, but it's a 23-14 game. A look at the tournament summary. Well, obviously, Duke really rolling against Seton Hall and Pacific, a 12 seed, looking to become Cinderella. And in the Pac-10 out of the tournament, but here are some guys who've made a name for themselves. Kurt Snyder and Kevin Pinkney in Nevada. Don't forget Todd Okerson as well. Just absolutely brilliant in the game against Gonzaga. 7.20 remaining in the first half. Mississippi State with a 23-14 lead over Xavier. Here's Sato. Goldman in the corner. Short. Roberts breaks it in. Roberts, Bowers, Frazier, Stelmach. Off-balance off shot by Frazier as he drove baseline. Now Chalmers the other way. Chalmers the crossover down the lane off the glass and in and he was so effective against Louisville driving to the basket 25 points for Lionel the senior Roberts elevates Miles is there, saves it from going out of bounds, but he stepped on the baseline. Well, Xavier back to their man-to-man, -man, forcing Mississippi State to play a little more deliberate right now as they need to be able to body up on people, try to force some turnovers or at least some bad shots. It's been much too easy for Mississippi State inside. They haven't connected to the extent they'd like to, but they're still getting the look. Bowers from the free throw line, out of bounds. And here comes Gary Irvin once again. Institution number 11, Gary Irvin. Irvin replaces Peter Stelmach. 6.09 to play in the first, 23 to 16. Well, Mississippi State's defense has done a tremendous job to hold Xavier to just one basket in the paint in their set offense. They've gotten a couple of breaks in transition, but nothing really in their set offense and you see again Xavier having to reset right now having a lot of difficulty getting shots in a high percentage situation in the corner Finn wide open and he hits well that was much better and it all was about Lionel Chalmers penetration on the baseline Xavier got down early to Louisville on Friday the Musketeers trailed by as many as 14 points Managed to rally in the second half. In and out dribble. Irvin down the lane off the glass. No. Goldman can't hold on. Irvin again. In the corner, Frazier rise and fire. Irvin there and knocked out of bounds. We'll head the other way. Well, here's the reason why you want to penetrate. Look at Gary Irvin there. Look at Finn there. You're going to see the penetration along the baseline. Irvin caught right there in the middle. And his man wide open on the baseline. And it's because of the penetration by Chalmers, the need by Irvin to help out. And Chalmers did a nice job of finding the open man. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Xavier is seven. Mississippi State at two. Sato down the lane off balance. Miles is there for the putback. And when Anthony Miles plays well, this Xavier team usually wins ball games. Musketeers on an 8-0 run. Irvin in the corner, Frazier again, and this time he hits. Both teams starting Frazier. to heat up now and again because people are penetrating the ball and finding the shooters. 
There's got to be a way now that each team understands defensively how to rotate. Chalmers, step back three, pure. This kid plays with so much poise. Not only an unbelievable basketball player, he's already earned his undergraduate degree at Xavier. He's in grad school right now studying counseling, and he has a 3.5 grade point average. Got his undergraduate degree in communications. Watch out, Lynn. You have competition. Well, he made the all-academic team in the A-10. And Lionel Thomas is about as cool as they come. And considering what happened against Louisville and the role that he played, you know, it's just a matter of time before he cuts loose. Roberts off the mark, 26-24. Bulldogs, here comes Chalmers again. Down the lane. Wheeling off the glass and in. He looked like Earl the Pearl. What did you say? He's a good student, pretty good teacher. It took Lawrence Roberts to school on the crossover. And a nice job, again, of picking his spots. Lionel Chalmers recognizing when to take off. Power the other way, so consistent. Three minutes to go, and Mississippi State up by a deuce. Chalmers along with Diedrich Finn, Miles, Dolman, and Sato. Down the lane, Chalmers off the rim with the feathery touch. This kid is ready to take over already. And he's really taken Gary Irvin wherever he wants to go down low. Xavier looking at that isolation, the senior against the freshman. He's at the last five for Xavier. High ball game. Now Irvin. Crossover. Rejected. Miles. Outlet pass. Chalmers. He's got Sato with him. Nice look. No fall. Bowers with the rejection. I think the mistake Sato made was he tried to double pump it instead of go strong. And Irvin answers on the other end. Two minutes to go in the first half. Mississippi State and Xavier. 30 to 28. Timeout. Musketeers. But it's Lionel Chalmers, the senior, taking the Bulldogs straight to the cooker. Seth Davis will speak live with Trent Johnson, the head coach of the Cinderella Nevada Wolfpack. Plus, they'll have the story of Oklahoma State's John Lucas and the singular one-on-one -on -one with Billy Packer trivia challenge. You played with John Lucas's father at Maryland. John Lucas Jr., one of the best point guards ever to come out of Maryland and in the ACC and in the nation. Pretty good tennis player as well. Actually had a chance to talk to Luke uh, a couple of days ago, compliment him on his son's play. But the one thing I was wondering is where did his son get a terrific jump shot? <laughs> uh, certainly John Lucas Jr. didn't teach him. He was so quick, though. He had a tiptoe shot. Could always get it off. Chalmers, he can shoot it. Buries a three. And Xavier takes a 31 to 30 lead. The first lead of the game for the Musketeers and Lionel Chalmers with 14 points in the first half. Hey, fellas, jump on my back. I'm ready to lead. Well, in the last nine minutes, Chalmers has been six for six from the field. First nine minutes, he was 0 for 1. So you talk about picking your spots. That's what an experienced player does. Here's Roberts backing his man down across the lane. Contested by Cole. Here comes Dolman to Cole. Nice grab down the lane. Big fella up and can't get the bounce. Now Bowers, quiet offensively, pulls up and rips it. Bowers with eight points. 33 to 31, Mississippi State under a minute to go. Here's Diedrich Finn. Cole slipping down the lane, short. Tapped around and picked up by Power. Boy, Cole's got to relax now. You can't short arm the ones two feet away from the basket. And a timeout called by the Bulldog. 26.4 remaining in the first half. Mississippi State up 33-31. During this time of year, seniors usually leave. Well, you can't overstate the importance of experience 
as well as skill. And both of these guys recognized, again, sense of urgency, team sputtering offensively. They decide it's up to them to take over. Nice timeout call by Rich Stansbury that time in order to get his offense going. Last shot of this half, make sure Xavier doesn't get their hands on the ball, and then Mississippi State gets a good shot going into the locker room. Sato has struggled, though, one of seven from the field. Eight seconds remaining. Bowers starts on the wing, fires a deep three. It's short. Goal with the rebound. Diedrich Finn. What a huge lift going in that locker room. And Rick Stansbury incredulous. Does it count? That's the question. Teacher Finn from beyond the half court line. At least from where I'm sitting with the naked eye, you can almost look in his face. Take a look at the clock. Lower right. There's a shot. Plenty of time as it left. Just a couple of tenths of a second. It's called plenty of time. And dead on. And it's funny how things work out. Prior to 9-11, Diedrich Finn was scheduled to visit Mississippi State. 9-11 occurred, he couldn't get on his flight and ended up signing with Xavier. And you see the ball out of his hands as everything lights up, signaling the end of the half. Diedrich Finn, the super six man for this Save your team another look. And watch the lights along the scorer's table. Ball's out of his hand. Lights come on. And that signals the end of the half. And that will count. Now let's go to Dwayne Ballard. Coach Mata, thanks for giving us a great first half. What a way to finish. No, that was, uh, was a heck of a play. The main thing is we got the defensive stop. We were actually trying to get him to foul. We didn't want to use our foul, but I'll take the result. Thank you, Coach. Cuss Lynn, what a first half. All right, Diedrich Finn, three of three from the three-point line. That's the end of the first half. Savior by one. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after these messages. Savior by one. We'll return to Orlando after this message and a word from your local station. It's exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Miller. Nextel, UPS, and by the new Chevrolets. We're ready to start the second half with Xavier leading Mississippi State by one. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. We see both teams shooting obviously below their seasonal percentages, and it's pretty tough inside. Lionel Chalmers got going in the first half towards the end of the half, 14 points on six of seven shooting. Different story, though, for Romain Sato. One of seven, only five points. And remember, in the first game they played, Sato was two for seven for the game. So Mississippi State doing a nice job of holding him in check from the field. But the reason I said it was tough inside, because within the three-point line, Xavier shooting 32%, Mississippi State 24, but Xavier 6 of 10 from beyond the arc, Mississippi State 6 of 11 from beyond the arc. So the battle is inside the paint. So Xavier had 13 points in the first 12 minutes, 21 points over the last eight, including that beautiful 58-foot jump shot, according to Diedrich Finn, that went down. And I tell you what, Mississippi State has to come out here in the second half, find a way to contain Lionel Chalmers. Six of seven from the field. He was the catalyst for the comeback in the second half. Chalmers, Sato, Chalmers from way outside. Chalmers is playing with so much confidence. And shooting from an area where no man dares to defend. Chalmers, the Atlantic 10 tournament, most outstanding player. Roberts, no. But Vincent is there for the follow. Frazier keeps it alive. And that's actually the 10th offensive rebound for Mississippi State. And according to the official box score, the first conversion 
First, second chance conversion. Chalmers down the lane, and he banks it down. What a player. Lionel Chalmers. An explosion here in the NCAA tournament. 24 points against Louisville. Chalmers with 19 already. Now Roberts pivots and draws a foul. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today's Chevrolet has contributed more than $8 million to the general scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. We've got both teams going to their strengths to begin this half. Xavier putting the ball in Lionel Chalmers' hands. And Mississippi State force-feeding Lawrence Roberts, each trying to gain an edge, trying to gain an advantage to take the lead. And Thad Mata has elected to start Diedrich Finn in the second half in place of Justin Dolman. Second free throw good. Rather, Dolman is on the court. Diedrich Finn getting the start in place of Justin Cage. Inside, Miles can't hold on, right into the hands of Vincent. Now Bowers the other way, swatted out of bounds by Dolman. Both teams still looking for penetration in that paint. At different points in the first half, very successful in creating for other people. Bowers, along with Roberts, Frazier, Power, and Vincent. Shane in the corner, finally missed one in this tournament. Rebounded and stuck back in, though, by Vincent. And that ball was kept alive by Winston Frazier, who, in this zone that Xavier's playing, every time a shot is taken, he's getting a running start to the backboard. Somebody's got to turn around and at least check Frazier, keep him from creating problems on that offensive glass. Brandon Vincent had 14 points and 11 rebounds in the first round against Monmouth. Shot 6 of 10 from the free throw line. But Lionel Chalmers has been lighting it up. Starts shooting from downtown, then decides he wants to get into the paint. And when you're effective from beyond the arc as he is, you got to play him for that shot, and that's when he puts it on the floor and blows by you. Sato spinning. The kick. Finn, pure. Well, we're seeing excellent basketball, excellent team basketball, particularly from Xavier on the penetrating kick. And Finn is having an outstanding game. Four for four from the three-point line, 12 points. Inside Roberts. Vincent. And another rebound for Romain Sato, his third. Miles backing up on Roberts across the lane. Beautifully done. Anthony Miles and Xavier has his largest lead of the game, 44-38. Remember, this Mississippi State team went undefeated on the road this entire season. Now Vincent turns, banks it home. And he's starting to flex a little bit. Both teams very efficient now, getting the ball to their people on the blocks. So Miles, the last time Xavier had it, and this time Vincent. And each team trying to attack from different points. Back door knocked away, Frazier. Can't track it down on the baseline. But the key is the penetrating kick. Watch him float out here as the penetration comes. And you see Frazier, number 23, right there, staying inside the paint, trying to help out and respect the penetration. That leaves the jump shooter wide open. Goldman, the runner, high off the glass. Vincent clears it. Here comes Bauer. In a hurry. Stripped out of bounds. And a foul. Chalmers got caught reaching in. And for Lionel Chalmers, that's his second foul. And that's one way you neutralize the hot hand. Make him play defense on the other end. Second team foul against Xavier as well as Tim Bowers. Misses the first free throw. And Justin Cage, the freshman from Indianapolis, comes into the game. He replaces Dolman. 
Second one good. Three point game, 16 13 to go in the second half. Xavier, a number seven, coming into this game. Winners of seven in a row, 14 of their last 15. Chalmers pulls up off the dribble. Too strong. Here comes Frazier. Kick and will reset the shot clock. Timeout on the floor, 15.50 to go in the second half. Xavier up 44 to 41. Tonight begins with America's number one news magazine, 60 Minutes, followed by television's most watched new drama, Cold Case. Then Russell Crowe, Meg Ryan, and David Caruso star in the network premiere of Proof of Life. It's all here tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. 15.50 to go in the second half. 44 to 41, Xavier with the lead. Well, Lawrence Roberts, you've seen Mississippi State labor to get the ball inside to him. Only managed one point from a free throw in the last 14-43. Another rebound for Lionel Chalmers. Into the front court. Cage. Now Sato wide open. And well, you're just impressed by the way Chalmers and Sato understand this game. Sato really held in check. Prior to that, one of seven from the field. But he allows the game to come to him, still executes, still looks for a shot. Sato with eight points now. And again, you look at the denial at the top. Nice job by Sato denying Frazier. Mississippi State wants to reverse the ball so they can go back to Roberts. That time they got it to the other side, and Roberts one on one on Miles. 47-43, Roberts with 10. Miles in the pivot, across the lane. Forced it up, halfway down, pops out, Roberts with the rebound. Here comes Bauer, Power pulls up off the dribble and bam. Shane Bauer with three threes in this game and 11 points. And once again, we have a one-point game, 47-46. Sato loves to go baseline. Mississippi State wants to keep him off the baseline. Now Chalmers. Inside, Cage can't hold on. Stolen by Tim Bowers. And out of bounds. Roberts couldn't hold on. Wednesday on CBS, Survivor is on a special night. What's gotten into the All-Stars that's making them so wacky? Don't miss Survivor All-Stars on a special night, Wednesday at 8, 7 Central, on CBS, America's most watched network. And that is the question today here in Orlando. Who will survive, Mississippi State or Xavier? These two teams, as you mentioned, Lenny met earlier this season with the Bulldogs defeating the Musketeers 82 to 70 on December 13th in Starkville. Different story though, neutral site, Xavier by one. High pick and roll, Chalmers, hard around the corner, pulls up, and rattles it down. Well, Chalmers becoming the master at the mid-range shot as well as beyond the arc. And one of the things that Xavier has to watch for, Chalmers on Shane Power. Shane Power, 6'5", able to get that long jump shot off as he did in transition. And this time, again, working to get the ball inside. Xavier finds some opportunities here on the other end. Xavier trying to take the charge. And that's Cole. Brandon Cole, the freshman from Richton Park, Illinois. Just and good ball movement. Braden, Brandon Vincent just doing a nice job of moving without it. When Americans are taken hostage, they turn to this man to rescue them. Russell Crowe, Meg Ryan, and David Caruso star in the network premiere of Proof of Life tonight on CBS, America's most watched network. 
Brandon Vincent misses the first, gets the second. Vincent, seven points, all coming in the second half. And now, Diedrich Finn will run the point. They want to free Chalmers and Sodom. Dolman with the step, leads in and hits the double clutcher. That was a little tricky by the freshman. 51 to 47. Now Frazier down the lane and draws a foul. Cole. Boy, Justin Doman, watch the baseline drive. I'm not sure he knew what he was going to do with it. He wanted to pass it and just saw a little bit of daylight and flipped it up there. Once again, a little tricky. He had everybody fooled. Nobody had a hand up anticipating the shot. So Winston Frazier at the line, four points today. Gets the first one to fall, Frazier, a 79% free throw shooter on the season. But Frazier, although he only has four points, make it five now, he does have nine rebounds as he gets the second one to fall. And that's because he's made a concentrated effort to go to the board, particularly the offensive glass, where we've seen several times he can get a running start from the top of the key just to keep the ball alive. Gary Irvin in the game for Mississippi State. Sato down the lane, the fade, off the glass, high, and in. And that's the key, high, that high trajectory on the fadeaway allows Sato to kiss it off the glass. Romaine starting to warm up here in the second half. Brandon Vincent blocked by Cole, the freshman. Here comes Chalmers. job of resetting right now recognizing they've got to hit some pressure points and right now they're working on Sato and Power's defense on them. Power trying to play a very physical brand. You see the forearm, a lot of bumping and that's what the success has been against Romain Sato for Mississippi State. We mentioned before first game Sato only two for seven in a 12-point loss by Xavier. Seven points. And in this game, again, diff shots are becoming difficult for him. But when he does get the ball, he's able to make something happen. Alsado on the baseline. Cole leads in short, ripped out of the air by Vincent. Powers in the game now for Mississippi State. He moves to the off guard position with Irvin at the point. Got a mismatch. Vincent! Whoa! Well, there was a mismatch with Sato on Roberts, and that opened up the middle as Mississippi State spread the floor. And Vincent, again, just blows right by his man, looking to rip the rim. Brandon Vincent, senior from Marrero, Louisiana. His coach calls him the workhorse on this team. And according to Coach Stansberry, He's the MVP because he can do all the little things, defend the post or the wing, goes inside, gets garbage, rebounds and baskets. That's the first free throw. Monday on CBS, the key evidence from a crime scene is stolen. Now CSI Miami must find it for a killer walk. Don't miss a new episode Monday on CBS. Vincent with eight points and eight rebounds, all in the second half. It's the second. And Sato with the rebound, his fourth. Miles. Again. Zip it up. But he walked. 11-23 remaining in the there second half. Three-point lead for the Musketeers. Looking for the upset. Welcome back as we take a look at the game summary. Xavier shooting 48%. Both teams, though, stroking it from the three-point line. Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. And Xavier's led by as many as six. Mississippi State by as many as ten. Nicely played basketball game thus far. Well, certainly, and again, when you look at Chalmers, Finn, and Sato, 43 of the Musketeers, 53 points. 
And Mississippi State doing a nice job. Shane Power, you saw him with his numbers, and he's been able to take advantage of the smaller guards of Xavier by stepping outside and shooting, knowing that those guys cannot get a hand in his face because of that size advantage. Now Xavier gets back into the zone, which was so effective against Louisville on Friday. But Gary Irvin has had some success penetrating the zone. Six to shoot, Bowers for three. Tapped around, Miles with the rebound. His ninth. Right now, Xavier's standing. When Miles gets the ball, that's the time to cut. You really can't just stand around and expect him to put it on the floor, go one-on-one. -on -one. That's not his game. Dolman wide open. Great ball fake. Extra pass. Miles up and in. Well, that's all about patience right there. Dolman didn't rush, didn't take the easy way out with the jump shot, waited for the defense to commit themselves and found Miles wide open underneath. Miles with eight points and nine rebounds. Now Irvin with the screen. Weaves his way down the lane on the hop. Short, Dolman with the board, knocked away power. Irvin, oh, he gets the roll and the foul. Gary Irvin, the freshman, just doing an excellent job once again. Just hanging around, mismatch on Justin Dolman. And all he had to do was stand there and wait for the ball to go in his hands and didn't have any fears going up against the big fella. And you just wonder how the Big East or the ACC missed out on this young man. Gary Irvin is a ball player. 55 to 53, Xavier. There's another ball player, Lionel Chalmers, 9 of 11 shooting it. This ball game, 21 points. Dolman straight away. Paddles it in. And that's his shot. Justin Dolman, 44% from beyond the arc. They call Dolman a gym rat. He likes to shoot between five and 600 a day. Although at that size, I hope at least half of those are inside. Are around the paint. <laughs> Spoken like a true big man, Brandon Vincent. Been great around the basket. Thumbs up short. Sato with his sixth rebound. Chalmers down the lane. The kick. Dolman down the lane. Up and in. I think he has been working on going to the basket. Well, he's got some skill putting it on the floor that time. And he's playing with confidence. Shows you what hitting a couple shots will do for you. And again, Dolman wants to penetrate, the kick back outside, the extra pass. That's a well-coached team right there. Catch the defense in their rotation. Dolman just puts it on the floor and just walks two guys home. So Justin Dolman, nine points, adds the free throw. And Xavier has a 61-53 lead. Goldman with six points in 32 seconds. Roberts back in, and he draws the foul. And this one will be called on Justin Goldman, his third. Well, that's on Xavier in a half-court trap. Good recognition by Mississippi State not to rush into the traps, but find their big man in the middle. And with Lawrence Roberts in the middle against his own, he can do so many things. Hit the shot, put it on the floor, find people. So Roberts, a 62% free throw shooter, misses the front end. With Roberts there in the middle, I don't think you'll see that trap very often. Just enough to plant a seed in the minds of Mississippi State. And that's what Xavier has to do. From the beginning of this telecast, we told you, they've got to change defense and keep Mississippi State off balance and neutralize that size advantage. Here comes Finn. And here comes the trap for Mississippi State. Trying to give Xavier a taste of their own medicine. Xavier with basically three guards on the floor. Tough team to trap. Goldman steps back. Again. The Pretty. freshman. Pretty. So poised. A 10-point lead for Xavier. Justin Dolman with nine points in a minute. 
And the Bulldogs want to talk it over. Upset in the making here in Orlando. See you next year. Higher seeds that have lost so far this tournament. Boy, you talk about Stanford and Gonzaga. Huge surprises. Xavier here as a seven seed looking to pull the upset, knock a two seed in Mississippi State out of this tournament. And we were talking off camera, Gus, and you're absolutely right. Xavier does have the ingredients. Terrific guard play. You know, a big man who understands his role on the glass. Finn coming off the bench, giving them a lift. But don't count Mississippi State out yet. You're talking about a team that's also built for the long haul. Got a lot of athleticism, guys who can stroke it from outside, and a dominant big man. Question is whether or not they can contain the guards here, as well as Justin Dolman from beyond the arc, because that's really where Xavier's making their run. 11 threes ties their season high. They average about eight per game, so they rely on a three-point shot. Frazier with the basket on the other end. Extra pass, Chalmers again. And Mississippi State not even out there contesting it. The whole defense is set below the arc. And a foul. This one will go against Xavier, but Lionel Chalmers has that block burner jump shot working this afternoon. And these guys get warm, and they can set the whole neighborhood on fire. Chalmers is 10 of 12. From the field, here's power. Foul called on Dolman, is fourth. And power gets the first one to go. Here comes the sub, Justin Cage. As Dolman heads to the bench with 7.45 to go in the second half, picking up his fourth. Justin Cage gives him a little more athleticism, maybe not the three-point shooter, but a guy who can crash the boards and play defense. Second one short, tapped around Vincent, tracks it down. Roberts with the rebound. Now Bowers down the lane, tough pass. Vincent makes the catch and banks it in. What a great catch by Brandon Vincent. A dangerous pass, and Mississippi State gets back on D. Down by seven. Back in that 2-3 zone. They play the last possession, but now you see the defenders are above the three-point line. Finn. The freshman game with a rebound and put back. And you talk about an excellent move. Dad Mata replacing Here's Justin Dolman with Justin, Justin Cage. And Cage comes in right away and pays dividends. Mississippi State bothering the three-point shooters now. And there's that athleticism, the rebounding, and the tenacity of Justin Cage. And with Justin Cage as a starter, this Xavier team is 14 and 1. 7 10 to play. 10 point lead for Xavier. All right. 70 to 60, Xavier. Let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Well, Xavier, again, we're talking about neutralizing the size of Mississippi State from beyond the arc, where everybody seems to have gotten into the game here for Xavier. And you saw that last one by Justin Cage. Seems that Xavier gets his three pointers one way or another. Now, Bowers, along with Vincent Power, Frazier, and Roberts on the court for Mississippi State in white. Inside, Roberts, outside, Bowers. Rims off, snatched out of the air by Miles, and he should be close to double digits in rebounds. He has 10. I don't miss a minute of March Madness. Get live video from all the games not shown in your area, plus access archives of games you've missed, highlights, press conferences, and more. Go to NCAAsports.com and click on live video. Four fouls now on Shane Power. 6.33 to play. Chalmers. The kick. Xavier much more deliberate right now. It's not as though they're trying to shave time off the clock. They're just trying to get the ball where they need to. More precise execution. Finn on the baseline. High arc short. Roberts another rebound. 
Bulldogs it wasn't, want to run it. It wasn't really the offensive sequence Bad Mata would have liked to have seen from his team. Power. Frazier from deep. Got it. Well, Xavier in the 2-3 zone. That time, Frazier able to find an open spot. And when you get the big guard, like a Winston Frazier outside on top, Finn and Chalmers, short guards, not able to bother the jump shooter. Mississippi State, though, can't trade baskets with Xavier. They need stops. Cage. And you're right. That's why Mississippi State now in the man-to-man. -man. And Xavier just looking to try to get some one-on-one -on -one isolation. Chalmers spinning. Oh, my goodness. This kid. This young man can ball. 72 to 63, Xavier. 26 points for Chalmers on 11 of 13 shooting. Inside, Vincent. And it's just snatched out of the air by Sato. And Miles doing a better job on the low blocks, forcing bad angles. That time, Brandon Vincent really had nowhere to go with that lefty hook. Sato. Here's the weave, Finn, fire. Chalmers with a hand on it and a rebound. Long Lionel shots. Chalmers. Long shots mean long rebounds. Guards have to get into the picture. Lionel Chalmers, a six-footer, so cool. And now here you see Xavier just telling Mississippi State, you're going to have to come out and play us, so or we're just going to let the time drip away. Cage with six on the shot clock to the basket off the glass. No, look at Miles Battles. Another rebound is 12. That was huge right there. You see the isolation. Xavier spreads the floor against Mississippi State's man to man, looking for one on one opportunities. And just when Mississippi State had to stop, Anthony Miles just thwarts it all. Xavier with two offensive rebounds this possession. Here's Chalmers down the lane. The kick, Finn. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's Xavier destiny. is unbelievable today. It's destiny. And His I fifth think, three of the game. And I think Xavier feels it right now. Everybody getting into the act beyond the arc. The Musketeers are 13 of 19 from the three-point line. Power on the baseline. And that one out of bounds will stay right here. 318 to go. The Musketeers are feeling it. As you take a look at the Xavier bench, they have done an excellent job shooting the ball from the perimeter this afternoon. And Thad Mata is distracted this afternoon because his daughter Emily, three years old, is in the hospital right now. She's dehydrated and Coach Mata's wife, Barb, had to go to the hospital with their other daughter, Allie. And before the game, Coach Mata wanted us to tell his family that he loves them. And so far, Daddy's having a good day at work with 3.18 to go. 75-63, Xavier. The fans about to shed one less burden if he can find a way to pull this game out. At the end of the day, though, this is a situation where a team like Xavier has executed extraordinarily well, particularly against the running and really aggressive Mississippi State defense. You notice just about every time on their open threes, it's been about the second pass, the extra pass. Penetrate, kick, and then a second pass that catches Mississippi State in rotation and a wide open look for the shooter. Chalmers, Bulldogs trying to apply pressure. And a timeout called by Xavier. 3.01 to go. 75-63 back after this. Monday on CBS, new episodes of Yes, Dear, Still Standing, Raymond, Two and a Half Men, CSI Miami, and The Late Show with Dave Letterman. 75-63, Xavier. Under three minutes to play. Here's Sato, and Xavier wants to use as much time as possible as Mississippi State traps. And Finn turns it over into the hands of Roberts. Now Bowers, Frazier in the corner, partially blocked. 
Into the front court, they find Finn. Straight to the basket, up and in. The Xavier Musketeers started this game shooting 25% over the first 12 minutes, but since that point, they've shot 65%. And we expected, expected some things, and some things were unexpected. Well, Justin Dolman against Louisville, 0 for 3 from the field for the entire game. And you talked about the number of shots he takes in practice. He must have doubled that because he came out here stroking and smoking, particularly from beyond the arc. Just an excellent game by the big fella. And you talk about unexpected, Lawrence Roberts, the complete package, the offensive player of uh, Mississippi State, the best player on that offense, one field goal in the last 27 minutes. And Rick Stansberry obviously puzzled by the lack of effectiveness by his big man. So Diedrich Finn goes to the free throw line. and It's funny how things work out. Finn was scheduled, as I mentioned earlier, to take his trip to Mississippi State. But then 9-11 took place and he ended up signing with Xavier. And a look at games coming up next. Busy day, BC and Tech, Memphis, Oklahoma State, Illinois, Cincinnati, Vandy, NC State from this site. Well, quite a con contrast in styles in that Boston College, Georgia Tech game. Georgia Tech very athletic, Boston College very young, like to play in half court. A lot of freshmen and sophomores for BC. Powers getting to the basket. 79 to 65, full court pressure. Here's Finn with 19 points today, and he's fouled in the backcourt by Winston Frazier. Mississippi State And Xavier, just an average team by today's standards from the free throw line, shooting about 68% as a team. Number 12, Diedrich Finn. Finn, about 67% from the line. So we obviously see Mississippi State's strategy from here on in. Xavier, 8 of 10 from the free throw line. What turned around the Musketeers this season? Well, I think, again, in talking to Thad Mata, he said it was the senior leadership and their experience. You know, they demonstrated poise. They wouldn't allow the rest of the team, the younger players, to quit. He also believes that it's the defense that did a terrific job. And we saw that defense uh, against Louisville. They held Louisville to under 40% from the field and 31% from three-point range, playing that zone, a little pressure man-to-man. -man. And so down the stretch, teams develop confidence and they start to put together a few wins, and it feeds on itself. Roberts banks it home, 80 to 67. Xavier under two to play. Check this out. Bob here needs a car. Uh, how about a pickup? Uh, a black one. With a place for my bike. With two million new and used cars, you're sure to find the one you want at autotrader.com. Need a loan? One. Xavier with three timeouts. Mississippi State, two. 80 to 67. With one minute and 57 seconds remaining here in the second half. Sato, double team, and Sato calls a timeout. 154 to go, 80-67, back after this. Xavier is playing for a trip to Atlanta to take on third-seeded Texas, who won yesterday against North Carolina. What a thrilling game. All the games yesterday were pretty good especially that North Carolina game against Texas and Syracuse holding on to beat the Maryland Terrapins. What are you laughing? <laughs> no, laughing. you got to give the Terps a lot of credit, though. Young team came back against the defending national champion. Down by 16. That's right. Took Jerry Mar McNamara out of the game, but Hakeem Warwick did what he did best and took over that game. Chalmers in the front court. Xavier wants to play keep away now as Finn draws the foul. 
And the last time Xavier advanced to the Sweet 16, 1990, and guess who they lost to? I can read the Longhorns. <laughs> it's amazing how history repeats itself. I'll tell you what. In some respects, at least the meeting. We don't know what the outcome's going to be because this Xavier team operating on all cylinders, looking for their 15th win in their last 16 games. Up Bowers pulls up the three. Miles had it. Power picks it up on the baseline. Power block into the hands of Vincent, who draws the foul with 1.28 to go. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Lionel Chalmers. What? A senior leader, 26 points, almost a perfect game, 11 of 13 from the field, and Shane Power with 12 points. And that doesn't reflect Lionel Chalmers' ability to continually get in the paint and draw the defense because he's such a hot player, then kick it out to wide open shooters like Justin Dolman, Justin Cage, and Diedrich Finn. So Miles. Walking off the floor. Let's see what happened to Anthony. He looks like he just got poked a little bit. Tender spot. Anthony Miles has been playing sensational basketball. Eight points, 14 rebounds. Had 19 points and nine rebounds in their win over top-ranked St. Joe's. And we mentioned Anthony Miles, a big key to Xavier's success. Again, he's not called upon to score, only in times when they can drop it off to him, occasionally keep the defense on it, but it's his rebounding and it's his defense that really keys the Xavier attack. Sato with his seventh rebound, Dolman to Sato, who goes up, exclamation point. The Xavier Musketeers. As Frazier misses, Roberts is there, but it's taken away by Finn with a minute and 10 to go. 82 to 68 how about this a number two falling again first gonzaga yesterday to nevada and now xavier and the frustration Just is showing putting it on mississippi state frustration is showing lawrence roberts kind of elbowed romaine sato as he walked by and you look at the advance of xavier for that meeting with texas in atlanta next week well actually this week So Finn at the free throw line, and it's been just an excellent year for Rick Stansberry and Mississippi State. Unfortunately, they ran into a determined group of Musketeers this afternoon. So I guess your pool is pretty much done. No, it's not done. It's just one. <laughs> just one. I really did expect Mississippi State to go a long way because of their athleticism, because of Roberts, but my hat is off to Thad Mott and his coaching staff. They found a way to take Lawrence Roberts out of the game. When he began this game, you thought he was going to be a major factor, but only 4 for 11, 11 total points, and in the last two-thirds of this game, really almost invisible. One field goal. Finn, what a game for Finn coming off the bench, 21 points. He started the second half in place of Cage. Here's power for three. Goldman. And Mississippi State has to foul with 56 seconds to go. So Lawrence Roberts, I'm sure this one will stick with him for a while in the first half, seven points. Non-existent in the second half, only four for the SEC Player of the Year. And it really began midway through the first half when Xavier started to change the defenses, as I mentioned, a little bit of pressure, a little bit of zone, and it took Roberts out. It made it very difficult for Mississippi State to get him the ball. And instead, they were forced to take some open shots from beyond the arc and in mid-range. That's why Shane Power came up big for a while because he was getting some looks. 
but it was just the offense of Xavier that took the heart of Mississippi State. It's so frustrating when you think you're playing good defense and guys are busting threes with regularity. Urban into the hands of Goldman. He somehow keeps it alive and comes up with a rebound, but it's stolen as Power lays it in. What a win in Mississippi State. One of those freshman mistakes, though. It would have been much better for Dolman just to hold on to the ball, get tied up, or even get a 10-second call rather than just give a basket away. But I don't think it's going to make much difference. Mississippi State foul on number 23, Winston Frazier. So Thad Mata picked up his 100th win on Friday against Louisville, only 36 years old. And 101 is a pretty nice one as well. Xavier heading to the Sweet 16. And Lionel Chalmers, a leader, a career-high 27 points for Lionel, make it 28, 86 to 70. Who expected this? Bowers down the lane, the teardrop goes down. Alsato into the front court goes Goldman. Mississippi State backing off now. As Finn. And a whistle a hold once again with 16.3 to go. Well, for a moment, you see Lionel Chalmers is a little frustrated, thinks he's getting fouled, but all he has to do is look up at the score. That'll, that'll assuage any hurt feelings. Let's look at the top of the Atlanta bracket. Duke will take on the winner of Illinois Cincinnati, and that game, folks, should be a war. Very tough and physical basketball teams. As Chalmers misses the free throw. Probably the only mistake he's made today. So Sato checks out of the game. Fans for Xavier. Show appreciation with 16 seconds to go. But Lionel Chalmers has scored a career high. 28. Mississippi State number 14, Dennis Hughes. Goldman, 13 points. Nine of them in one minute. Xavier number 32, Keenan Christensen. Chalmers good on the second. 29 points for Lionel. Substitution, Xavier number 52, Will Collins. Urban down the lane. Lays it to power. 87 to 74. Here's Chalmers again. Rev up the bus in Cincinnati. The Xavier Musketeers are heading for Atlanta. A lot of smiles on that Xavier bench. Mississippi State foul on a great deal of disappointment on the Mississippi State bench. Came in with such high hopes. Two seeds. Just a dominant performance in the SEC. Xavier, great parts. Three guards that can handle the ball and score. A big man in Anthony Miles that can give you points on the block and rebound. 31 for Lionel Chalmers, senior leadership. And listen to this. Chalmers steps out of the game. A young man from Albany, New York. 11 of 13 from the field. Knocked out of bounds with five tenths of a second to go. Xavier advances to the Sweet 16, 89 to 74, the final, defeating Mississippi State. Coming up, we'll send it to Greg Gumble.